on my far, far left is Tim from Suckerman, uh, David from White Gold, and Jim from Abin. So Tim, how much cash does Suckerman have, and how much exploration are you gonna be doing for Catalyst moving forward? Uh, currently, we've got about 3.5 in the kitty, and the current program of uh, 10,000 meters, uh, two rigs, which uh, should get us through to Christmas, uh, about 1.2. So we'll be in good stead after this uh, phase of work is completed. Okay, David, how much cash does White Gold have? Um, currently 8 million, but we announced a bought deal financing about 10 days ago, which closes November 8th for another 15. So we'll end the year with approximately 21, 22 million in the bank. Right on. And Jim, Abin? Uh, we currently have just short of seven million in the till. We just raised that this drill pro drill season. Um, got, had one drill turning. We've got everything just, just shutting down now. So how many more meters of exploration results are coming out? We've got 20, well, we've got 24 holes still to report on. That's all. That'll come through probably into the mid to late December. So why don't you tell everyone your best yeah. results so far, and are the results coming and looking to be appear more extensions of that plunge? I can hope so. Uh, our the best results so far, we had a zone about 10 meters of 38 grams, and within that was six meter intersection section of, of 62 grams. Um, that's what got our season going. Uh, we've done some step outs from there. We've reported on it. To match that, those grades is is not the easiest thing in the world, but we definitely have good mineralization around it. Um, going forward, we're we've actually we're really peppering this north boundary zone, so we're hoping to have similar grade. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the proof is in the the drilling itself. So, David, how many meters of drilling are you guys going to be coming out? Because your program is one of my favorite of the exploration pro. And I, um, if you recall what I said last year at this time, I'm not sure on the exact meters, but we um, on all three of our, the discoveries announced to date, we have um, probably another 50 holes from them. 30 of them being at um, the Vertigo. Um, but we also have all of our regional results, which included uh, probably another 60, 70 wrap holes. So you want to kind of update everyone on your best hole? Uh, the best hole for, from one of the three discoveries we've had, which are all distinct, um, would be uh, on the Vertigo. We had 24 meters at 24 grams from surface. That ended in mineralization. Uh, that was done with a RAB drill. We've since then RC drilled uh, and extended it. So the extension of that hole will still be coming out. It was open. Tim, and what is the best result of yours, and what do you expect in the coming meters? Well, our best hole was our first hole, which uh, sometimes is not the, be <laughs> not the best order to put them in, but it returned 11.9 uh, uh, meters of 44.9 uh, grams, and uh, that's currently where Rig 1 is focusing now. Uh, we've drilled six holes to date in Phase 2, and we have about 1,000 samples uh, outstanding in the lab for, uh, for return, and... Uh, uh, hopefully, first batch uh, in two weeks or so. so. So, Tim, who's your largest shareholder? Uh, Mr. Eric Sprott is actually our largest shareholder at about 15%. And how much has he invested in the deal? He put uh, two million in okay. at 15 cents. And your current market cap? Uh, about 15 million. Okay. So he's got three cash, 15 million market cap. Eric Sprott is a backbone, and Eric doesn't really walk away unless there's a reason to walk away, which means no more results, right? David, who's your largest shareholder? And how uh, much we have, have two that both have 19.9, .9, Igniko Eagle and uh, Kinross. So just so people know, Igniko and Kinross are of the largest producers. And what's interesting in that region is, you know, Igniko had a little battle. You know, White Gold Corp came out and bought out coffee, the district from Kamenak, and uh, Agnico is now making sure that they're there. And the, uh, interesting, and Kinross, you want to walk through the transaction where they sold you guys one of the projects? Yeah, we uh, well, we first uh, after we assembled the the initial land package, we approached Agnico and they came in and bought a controlling position, 19.9, uh, and then shortly after that, we were able to convince Kinross to to bring in all of their land position, which included uh, the Golden Saddle resource, which they had purchased from Underworld back in 2009. 
Um, and so they both now own 19.9. Uh, Igniko has been there th uh, on every raise um, and played pro rata. And Kinross has now come in in the last two since they added those assets to the package. Uh, let's talk about the three other largest individual shareholders. My good buddy, Chairman Pat DiCapo, uh, Sean Ryan, and yourself. Yeah, um, pa Pat's a sincerely successful uh, entrepreneur in the space. He's, he's a great person to have involved in any company. He's been there in the Yukon before, loves the Yukon and the potential there. He would be the next biggest shareholder. Uh, and then that would be followed by Sean Ryan, a uh, legendary pros prospector. This has been his personal playground for the last 20 years and sort of has unlocked a, a lot of the ways and secrets on how to find these uh, these deposits and resources. So just to kind of give David some street cred here that everyone realizes uh, it was a January 2000, I can't remember now, 9 or 10. My wife was doing her MBA in finance at, uh, uh, on the weekend at UBC downtown. We'd have breakfast, I'd drop her off, and I'd walk to the office, and i get a phone call on a Sunday, and I'm thinking, who the hell is that? I pick up the phone, and I hear, I see you, I see you. And David's office was across the street, and he's looking down at my window, and I'm like, where are you? <laughs> and I go, why don't you come by for a cup of coffee? And that was the actual genesis of uh, what became Ryan Gold. And that was the first 10 bagger Brent Cook made with me. And uh, that's when I introduced uh, Rob McLeod. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, Rob McLeod to the deal. And now he's on the board. Uh, Rob Carpenter. Sorry, Rob Carpenter, sorry. But, um, and then Rob McLeod became a shareholder. Ron Parrott, Miles Thompson. When the geos in the industry are excited about a project, that's when you want to pay attention to it. Um, Jim, who's your largest shareholder? Well, right now it's currently uh, Eric Sprott. Uh, we did a financing with him. He's got about, well, just 9.9%. 9 .9%. Now, I know Eric Sprott quite well. You know, he's technically Rick Rule's boss. Um, how did you get Eric into it? Well, I, and why? I know, I've known him since the Bayfield days. Um, that's where I first met him, and we stayed in touch from time to time. But I, I ended up uh, getting him on the phone one morning. I had his phone number from way back, and uh, I could hear him working on his engine up at the lake. Yeah, on the boathouse. But it was essentially because of your results, <laughs> not because he likes you. That's right. <laughs> Always results driven. Always. Um, but it was, you know, I did get hold of him. We had a good talk and, and he said, yeah, I'm in. So let's talk about the region of where you are in, in Canada and the political risks or when you compare it to other parts of the world. Where do you see, if you do prove up a serious project, what do you see moving forward in BC? I think it's in a great area of BC, personally. Um, call me a little bit biased, I guess, but uh, they've got an area that's been invested in by the government with a tremendous amount of infrastructure and, and pushing forward uh, energy resource for the whole area up there now with the Alta Gas uh, facilities. So they were anticipating mines opening because really the only communities up there is Dees Lake and Telegraph Creek and Iskit. There's not a lot, lot else, but they've now got the power, so Red Chris has moved in and opened up a mine. Uh, Bruce Jack is open and running now. They've got some of the biggest undeveloped resources on the planet sitting there waiting for a higher commodity price. And they've got the resources, and, and the highway runs right, right through it. That highway was not paved back in the early days of exploration up there. And now you've got a to the north of that whole area, you've got the Glor Creek Road that can get you in there. And on the south, you've got the Alta Gas Road that can get you right in. It'd be nice to remind all these environmentalists who come up to complain what built BC. It wasn't the tourism or yeah. the Chinese real estate, it was mining. Well, here's a, here's a unique case there too, is if they ever do attempt to clamp down on things up there, look out because you got to deal with the Taltan. They're a hundred percent behind all yeah. of what's going. and they're going to want their cut of the action. They don't want the government yeah, yeah. or NGOs. Coming they're already in. getting it. Yeah, they get it, and it's not directly coming from us. It's coming from the tax base that's being paid for through production. Um, we do sign communication agreements and et cetera, et cetera. But you know, they're there to to, to make money, and so are we. So. so, David, what about you? The political risk in your jurisdiction. What can you share with the audience? 
Well, um, in general, or the the local community is very supportive. The First Nations, we have a really good relationship with them. And but remember, a lot of people don't know where you are. Oh, First sorry. of all, the Yukon. We're in the Yukon and uh, up in, in the Dawson region. Uh, Gold Corp, you know, re recently came to commercial terms with the First Nations in there. They're the same ones we deal with. But, uh, you know, this is an area that's uh, very familiar with um, placer mining. You know, the, this is where the Klondike Gold Rush happened. And so the whole community has always had. Uh, uh, it's in their survive. DNA. Yeah, exactly. Tim, how about what's your opinion on the political risk in your jurisdiction? Well, it may come to a surprise to a lot of people, but Newfoundland is actually one of the uh, per capita bases, one of the biggest contributors in terms of mining, you know, uh, percentage of gross domestic product to the country in terms of, you know, the iron ore and nickel and copper and gold and floor spar. And, uh, and the government is definitely open for business. In fact, companies of our size, um, we actually qualify for, uh, for government grants, rebates from our, from our exploration efforts. And certainly on the permitting side of things, uh, we're opening new mines, uh, you know, uh, in fact, uh, two new mines have opened up in Newfoundland in the past couple of years. So, uh, um, and and where our property is situated in, in terms of, uh, of infrastructure and things, uh, you know, we're, we're two hours drive from basically the mining supply centers for, for the drillers, the assay labs. Uh, we're only two hours from, you know, former producing mines. So, um, you know, it's not a, it's an area that certainly knows that resources are, are where the bread and butter lie in the province. Plus, you have a unique accent for, Can for, for Canadians. One of them, yeah. So now I want everyone to take out their pens so we know the three companies here. I, I'm a pretty large shareholder of White Gold. Um, I didn't invest in Abin. I wanted to, but I didn't get the warrant that I wanted, and I'm pretty disciplined on that. And you had someone named Eric Sprott willing to do it, so I bowed out. I was going to do a big chunk of it, but Eric and I butted heads, and he threw his elbow at me, and I dodged. I don't own Sokamin. Um, I don't actually know the project well enough. Usually I go to visit and do my due diligence. Um, but I want each of you to give me one drill play that you are watching to the crowd that if you weren't running your deal, you would want to be on the rig of that project. So that's a really unique perspective from your guys' side. Tim? Well, I'm going to keep it in my own backyard, and I'm going to put my name on Marathon Gold uh, with the Valentine. Ticker symbol MOZ. Uh, 3.2 million ounces, and that thing just keeps, it's like the Energizer Bunny. I mean, it just keeps on going, and, uh, you know, they've got like 20 kilometers of this structure. Okay, give me another one, though, because that one's well known, and it, it's not like a, a grassroots discovery. They already have over 3 million ounces. Give me one that Black Swan, zero to hero. Uh, boy, uh, I'm going to have to go with Jim, I guess. Uh, you know, we have a very similar... Can't be on stage. Oh, can't be on stage. <laughs> damn, damn it, damn it. Why not? Because um, <laughs> we already have that ticker. I've never I'll, met I'll him come before. Back I've to never you. met him before. Yeah, let me think about it. David, you, my two you know they're going to the bar after. <laughs> um, I, li I like to dream big on these things, just like White Gold. We own in, With White Gold, we own 400,000 hectares uh, in, in the White Gold district. Uh, every time we make a discovery or their and uh, our team is familiar with uh, familiar and been part of all the other past discoveries we learn something new that allows us to m more easily um, unlock the puzzles and find new things and so uh, I like these bigger area plays that with dreaming and so there's a couple things in Brazil that I find interesting both uh, Altamira and Cabral are down there and they're places where they have large land packages and uh, if as, as people learn to uh, so Altamira ticker symbol ALT TA. And what's Cabral? CBR? Cabral, CBR. CBR? But yeah. both are in uh, brand new kind of regional plays that are largely staked by majors. But Why don't you share really what's going on with uh, Altamira? Because if I was to ever say that there is a mad staking rush from the majors, it's that area right now in Brazil that nobody's talking about. I was actually supposed to write a special report. I never got around to it because we had a kid. We just had our third child, and I, you know, fortunately, like, fortunately, and, you know, I just got busy. But I think it's one of the most interesting geological plays because it's one thing for um, area plays where, like, guys with no money come and stake land around a discovery. This is 
the biggest companies in the world are doing a mad rush. David, in like 60 seconds or less. Yeah, it's it's an area that where these, these juniors were there because of the gold, but uh, you know, high grade gold structures and things occur next to porphyries. Uh, a major had a thesis and idea, they tested it, uh, made a discovery hole, and then since then they've staked over three million uh, hectares and about four other major mining companies have staked large million hectare land positions. And by fluke, well, fluke, Destiny, Foresight, Altamira just happened to be there, and that's what happened. Uh, Jim, give me one. Well, I'm going to go back to my own old stomping grounds in Red Lake. It's great bear. I think what they've come up with, and it's been tested in the past, and it's one of those stories where I think it's just... You don't think it's ahead of itself for what they found? It's not um, cheap. Like you can it, buy pure, but you could buy pure gold right now, cheaper, defined, with more ounces than. I'd rather there. be in Red Lake, to be honest with you. But it's, it's, it's a tighter structure. Um, they've got some very good people involved now as, as big shareholders. But it's about what that's, price you that's pay. That's the credibility you, you, bump. You think they're I gonna? That, I know. I know that, but it's the price I paid. But. You know, okay. It's uh, the some great drill result, no doubt about tremendous. it. Tremendous, and you know, it's one of those situations where they went in and looked at it just a little bit differently, and they probably had access to better geophysics than what was done in the past, and they just basically turned the drill around and oriented the co the holes in the opposite direction, and boom, they're right in the structure. And every time they step out, they hit the structure. They hit the structure. It's so easy to see. It's right at surface almost. I'll give you one that you've probably never heard of. Uh, open disclosure, I bought a ton of paper. I'm one of the larger shareholders. Uh, Sun Metals. They put out a huge hole, and I think it's the beginning of a CRD deposit that when you look at someone like Peter McGaw, go on and watch the videos, ticker symbol is S-U-N-M. And... Um, you know, when you, you get $500 rock in BC, you know, we're mining $45 rock at Copper Mountain. There's something real there. And a market cap of 15 million bucks with $4 million, Marco Day, the real deal. Um, so we got a few times, a uh, few minutes for questions. Any questions from the crowd? Bill Trimble, you got any questions? Russ, you got a question? Uh, this is one of the famous no one has a question? They're learning. Oh, by the way, my pick, uh, I, I have to agree with Jim. And if uh, uh, I have I still don't know him. <laughs> we, we only met just outside the hall here. But no, uh, I agree. I think, I think Great Bear. And you ask about the premium to the stock. I think it speaks of the camp, right? You know, the Red Lake yeah. camp, high grade king. And uh, God, I wish Rob McEwen was here because yeah. I believe he was the lead in that financing. He was. Yeah. Yeah, he was. And, and he knows Red Lake probably better than anybody. So you've got that premium in it because of that, yeah. as well as what they're doing. But it's one of those ones you buy on the dips. I will sure. give a tout. Copper Mountain pulled out huge numbers on New Ingerbell. And a lot of people forget that having a massive deposit right beside an operating mine within the envelope and a past producer. And I would throw Liberty Gold as having some really good numbers too on Black Pine and uh, Gold Strike. So there's some interesting plays there. Someone had a question here, Ben? Did you have a question? Um, I didn't catch the name, Jim, of the company, Red Lake. Was it Great Bear? Yeah. Ticker symbol is GBR, right? Yeah. Correct. It's another it's one on of John Robbins. Yes. Well, they staked it. Yeah. Any other questions in the crowd? I've got a minute. Or I can rip into them a bit more. I've got a hearing issue. Uh, that company, was it Ultramar? Ultram Altamira. Ticker symbol A-L-T-A, -A, like Alta. Thank you. Altamira, M-I-R-A, Altamira. Guys, but these are so small market caps. Don't rush in and chase the stocks. In this market, you don't need to be an alligator. They'll come to you. Don't worry. And are they here? Uh, no, they aren't. Altamira's not here, eh? Okay. Any other questions in the crowd? I want to make sure you have your questions answered. Brent Cook, what's your number one drill play this year? <laughs> Give us one ticker right now that you find interesting. GTT Gold. That's another BC play. Hit a nice porphyry hole. Um, really good numbers coming out of that. What was that rock valued at? Like a thousand bucks a uh, ton? It's like one and a half percent copper. So, okay. it so it's not that high, no. But 
they might not be onto a huge porphyry system though. It's interesting. That's a good one to watch too. What's that? <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I'm going to ask a quick last question I have on my list. Jim, what is your largest holding? And don't say cash or in a stock. In a stock? Um, about a million and a half shares right now. Of Abin? Yeah. David? Um, my largest holding would be White Gold. Yeah. Tim? Sockerman. Brent Cook? Everum? Brent, you might not know David, but remember when we did the Ryan Gold, when you hopped into my office that one day? You better. You made over 10 times your money on it. That was the guy that put it together with Sean Ryan. So, yes, sir. Tim, why has Newfoundland suddenly come alive? There's an influx of Scottish geologists, or uh, nothing was found there for years, and now there appears to be a number of discoveries. Well, I, I think, you know, uh, Newfoundland has never really been given uh, um, its, its due uh, course in terms of being a destination for gold. I mean, Because they all moved to BC. <laughs> yes, uh, or Scarborough. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, we've always been known as a base metal or iron ore sort of district. But is Brian Dalton just still stomping grounds there? Yeah, well, yeah, he's finding new things all the time. I mean, it's, and that's the other surprising thing. I mean, people think, you know, Newfoundland has a mining history going back like 250 years, and there's still stuff to be found on surface there you know in, in in rocks that are proven elsewhere like you know the doll radian you know over in over in uh, ireland i mean those rocks come right through newfoundland you know those structures rip right through newfoundland on the other end of it you've got oceanic gold down in the carolinas and now we're suddenly starting to see you know multi-million ounce gold deposits in newfoundland you know and, and the success of the guy stephen dean coming in and bringing his crowd and actually making it work and attracting investors people are starting to speculate that hey maybe the district isn't it was known as kind of suboptimal because it was potty and they would do that hub and spoke strategy but it's actually working so and we've really only had a 30 year uh, history in terms of dedicated gold exploration yep. because uh, you know there was really no competitive claim staking permitted yep. really in Newfoundland prior to 1978 until the mining act was rewrote there were 35 known gold occurrences in Newfoundland in 1980 now there's over 500 we've had four producing mines and now we're starting to get a feel for multi-million ounce gold deposits you know in the same rocks that people have been walking over for for base metals for for decades you know there you go okay i believe next up next is jordan trimble